Uh, your thoughts about Aiden Hutchinson, who was obviously banged up and only played a couple games here in 2020, coming off a big uh, 2019 campaign. Yeah, I mean, this was an absolutely huge uh, new breaking news for Michigan. It was uh, it was a, a spot for Michigan that I they believe that they will lose uh, Quiddy Pay uh, to the NFL, who is going to he played himself into probably a first, maybe early second round pick um, at the other defensive end spot. Uh, and so, if Michigan was going to lose both those guys it would have been a big hit to a defense that was already depleted and didn't play well in just about every game of 2020. So um, this was a big deal for Michigan. And, you know, I say it's a big deal on the ta- on the field as in talent, but it's also a huge deal uh, in terms of leadership. Uh, the, the Michigan football team, especially on the defensive side, uh, seemed to lack leadership all year. And Aiden Hutchinson is a junior. He was a junior captain. Um, so I assume that he'll be a captain again. Um, and so in terms of somebody who's going to um, have accountability for each players, especially with a new defensive coordinator, it really helps for them to have some continuity here uh, with Aiden Hutchinson back on the field and back in that locker room. Uh, in 2021. So I, I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, whether it's Will Muschamp or somebody else coming in in 2021 as the defensive coordinator. Um, but I think that Aiden Hutchinson will have that leadership role and he'll come in and say, all right, you know, I, I don't really care who the defensive coordinator is. This is my squad. This is my team here. And we are not going to let the same thing happen to us in 2020 uh, that we, uh, you know, that uh, is going to happen in 2021. Again, if we go back to 2019, we see what uh, Aiden Hutchinson is capable of. 69 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, and three and a half sacks along that Michigan defensive front. So you mentioned Quiddy Pay um, most likely gone to the NFL. So how does the D-line stack up for 2021? Does this look to be a strength again? We'll see. Um, I think it could be a strength on the outsides, as it has been for pretty much every year under Jim Harbaugh, whether you go back to Josh Uche and Chase Winovich uh, and Rashawn Gary. Um, there have been a lot of guys on the outside on the defensive ends that have played really well, and that has been a strength of this defense. And it, it would have been if in 2020 as well if both Aiden Hutchinson and Quiddy Pay were healthy all year, but both were pretty banged up, actually. You know, obviously Aiden was out for the entire year after his ankle injury. Um, but I, I think this could be a strength. Uh, you know, I, I wonder if, if Hutchinson will be the anchor end or if he'll actually be put to the other side uh, and, and be kind of let loose a little bit. Uh, he, he made some unbelievable plays being able to uh, set the edge and then still uh, shed the guy and make the play this year. And we saw that even early in 2020, as well as, uh, you know, early in his career in 2019. Um, but when you have guys that are coming up behind him, uh, Luigi Villain is a guy that is, uh, that is going to, you know, he actually, in my opinion, probably should have been, uh, breaking out earlier than we've seen him. I, we had, he had high hopes, but definitely some, uh, some injuries. Um, he'll be a fifth year senior though. So it's, it's this, it's now or never for Luigi Villain on the other defensive end. Um, but you've got also uh, Taylor Upshaw, who's a senior, uh, David Ajabo, who's a junior, and then Braden McGregor is coming on, coming up as well. Um, so we'll see uh, how that all, um, how that all uh, pans out. Um, you've also got uh, guys on the inside. So Carlo Kemp was a senior this year. He now, you know, has another year of eligibility. We'll see if he takes it. He, uh, you know, he may say, all right, I'm pretty good. Even if I don't have a shot at the NFL, that was a great career that I had. Let me move on to the the next phase of my life. He could stay. Um, We've yet to hear a a decision from him. Um, But you've got talent wise, you've got unbelievable talent all across this defensive line. Um, It's just really developing them. We've seen Mozzie Smith, Donovan Jeter, and Chris Hinton uh, at the nose tackle and defensive tackle positions. We've seen them seen them a little bit, and they should have been 
panning out to be better than they have been, than they've shown so far. Um, so maybe they take this next step. Maybe with uh, Sean Nua staying at the, as the defensive line coach, or maybe uh, Will Muschamp or whoever is the new defensive coordinator brings somebody else in and, and is able to develop those guys. But you've got some big, big boys that are in the middle, and that really has been the biggest issue for Michigan uh, this past year was that running up the gut. Uh, you know, how many times did Wisconsin and even Minnesota and uh, everybody really just ran right up the middle against Michigan and they weren't able to stop it on the defensive line and then at the linebacker position as well. Um, but if you look at it, you know, there's also a chance that Rayshon Benny, who is a Michigan State commit right now, he did not sign in the early signing uh, day. So there's a chance that he flips um, So Michigan players and coaches were actually actively recruiting him. Uh, on uh, Twitter, I think actually just players because I, I think that's a violation for if he's committed somewhere else for a coach to do it on Twitter. But definitely some players were tweeting at him. Uh, there's uh, rumors that he may flip, which even as a freshman, I believe he would have an impact on this defensive line. So um, could it be a strength for Michigan? Absolutely. They have the talent. They have the players. It's will they have the coaching and the development from this new coaching staff uh, to get them into position to actually make an impact on the field. You're basically giving us, Justin, a microcosm of what the offseason is going to be for every college football team across America after the uncertainty of what 2020 was during the season, the offseason, when you combine the extra year of eligibility for seniors and not knowing uh, which ones are coming back, which ones are going to stay, and then the transfer portal blowing up like it never has before. Just the personnel uncertainty of what these teams are going to look like across America is going to be fascinating because there's going to be news every day of the offseason concerning somebody somewhere. Well, I mean, I, I have you seen the numbers that are in the transfer portal already? Oh, my goodness. They're in the, what, 300s and yes. 400s? Like, it's unbelievable. And we knew that was going to happen because of the new rule. Um, and then they add the extra eligibility in there and it's, you know, it, it quantifies that really quickly. Um, but I think that is a major positive for Michigan. They can go into the transfer portal and get some people for this defensive line, especially at the tackle position, nose tackle and defensive tackle position that is so desperately needed because we talked about it last week. They still have yet to sign a defensive tackle in the last three recruiting classes. So it, you, which is, again, it, I can't emphasize enough how unheard of and how ridiculous that is. Um, so if they are actively recruiting some defensive tackles right now in the transfer portal, I don't know what they're doing. So um, they, they have to hit that portal and say, all right, the, uh, there are some guys that I've even seen that were once either committed to Michigan uh, or transferred from Michigan or, you know, were hot on the trail at for the Wolverines um, that now have are in that portal. And you can say, all right, you liked us at one point, you know, did, do you still like us enough to come here and give us a second shot? Um, and so there's going to be opportunities for some, some guys from that portal to step in at a lot of different positions and play right away in 2020. I see it happening on the defensive line. I, I could see it happening at the linebacker position and the cornerback position as well. And then on the offense, I could see it on the offensive line too. So we'll see how that all pans out, but you're very right. It's going to be interesting for this whole off season. When the transfer portal was first being used and publicized a couple of years ago, it used to be obvious to see, okay, you can see quarterback battle, quarterback rooms full, guys going over here for an opportunity. It used to be easy to identify. Now I'm seeing guys in the transfer portal that I'm seeing, you play in that position for a pretty good program. You seem to be the number one guy at a particular position on the surface, I don't know why you're leaving. They guys just seem to be just maybe testing the waters. I don't know what they're doing, but uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a season and off season of flux. No question about that.